Hey! What's going on everyone? My name is Trey, and I'm bringing you this pretty good gameplay here. It's my 12th swarm, as it were, and it happens to be a double dog gameplay as well. I managed to go 43-0 and 0 flawless on this map, a map considered by most other YouTubers who play this game, to be a terrible map. Now, personally, I don't see it. I tend to do very good here, and I do like how the layout of the map is. Anyways, so I wanted to go ahead and speak about third-party exclusives for the Wii U. So, I want to go ahead and talk about some awesome exclusives for the Wii that you may recall, such as No More Heroes, Red Steel, Mad World, The Conduit, and some others I'll get into a little later. I'm just naming the top games that I consider for being the best Wii exclusives that were third-party developed. No More Heroes 1 and 2 both got raging reviews. Red Steel 1 did poorly, but Red Steel 2, with its whole entire style change, did actually a lot better than the first one and got it a really good reviews, too. Now, Mad World, of course, everyone loved Mad World. It was just awesome. It looked great, even on Wii. So, what's not to love? A brawler game. I would love to see this personally come to Wii U, even if it's not a remake or, you know, just an HD version so I could get, get a more solid and crisper blacks and whites version of the game, I guess. Because I really do like this game. It's really, really fun. And, of course, the Conduit, which came out with... Oh, wow, look at what happens when a developer actually takes their time to make a game for the Wii and not just ports it over and just, oh, the Wii can handle it fine. Here, just throw it in where, you know, High Voltage Software actually pushed it to see how much the Wii could handle. You can see the product, the Conduit. Fantastic game. Now, all these games were really great in their own way. No More Heroes had a great story. Red Steel 2 was really great gameplay and excellent style. Mad World, again, great gameplay, excellent style as well. The Conduit had multiplayer. It was basically an FPS for the Wii, an original FPS for the Wii. Can you think of a original FPS for other consoles? Maybe Halo on Changing. Xbox? Maybe Resistance on PS3? Okay, the Wii definitely needs its own FPS exclusive, and we got it with The Conduit. It was a really great game, and the graphics were excellent. In my opinion, they were the best graphics of any Wii title ever to be released. Granted, the game did feel very confined, and it was. Everything was more of a box, so, of course, you could probably push it because, you know, it's not anything, any extremely cool scenery. But, you know, you got that and then they released, of course, other titles from these excellent games. Such as No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle, which got great reviews. Red Steel 2, great reviews. Matter World didn't release a sequel. The Conduit 2, which mm, I believe did didn't do as good as the first one, which is unfortunate, and the first one did get hacked, like, right off the bat, which was a developer error because they left the menu right on there, something like that. Anyways, I thought the game was awesome and really fun, I would have hoped more people would play it, and I would love to see it come to Wii U, of course, because Conduit 3 HD, like, they, they were pushing HD on Wii, I can't imagine how much they're going to push the Wii U, because I don't believe any developer really has taken the time to push the Wii U to its limits yet. Where, of course, High Voltage Software pushed the Wii to its limits with the Conduit, I would love to see them push the Wii U to its limits with the Conduit 3. Now, let's go ahead and speak about some other games that were released by High Voltage Software and or were meant to be released. Such as Gladiator AD. Now, do you guys remember Gladiator AD? It was a game shown at the E309 alongside the Conduit and the Grinder. Of course, you recognize the Grinder, right? That was also a great game. And of course, you recognize the Conduit. Now, Gladiator AD, why can't you recognize that game? Oh, I know why. Because it was never released under Gladiator AD, it was released under Tournament of Legends. Now, I've posted a couple links on every game I'm speaking of here, so you guys can check it out if you don't, are not aware of these games. 
so you can kind of see of what I'm speaking about. And of course, you can see Tournament of Legends. And I'm gonna go ahead and post the Gladiator AD and Tournament of Legends gameplay, both of them next to each other, so you can check it out and see for yourself. Now, Gladiator AD looked absolutely great. It looks like Sons of Rome for Xbox One, and it looked great. It looked, it looked like the style I would expect from a game where you're a gladiator. It looks gritty. It has brown and bloom to it, but it looks gritty. It looks grungy, and it just it just looked really good. And what ended up happening was that Tournament of Legends, basically the what Gladiator D became, it turned into a much more vibrant looking game. It wasn't as desaturated. It wasn't as gritty as Gladiator AD. It still had all the blood. I am assume it still had all the mechanics. But with the name change, no one recognized it. And with the entire style change, who was expected to? The vibrant colors completely offset what used to be good about the old game. The color grading in that one was just absolutely amazing. The, the color palette was great. Now, let's move on to the last game here. The Grinder. The Grinder was a really great looking game. And when I say great, I mean absolutely great. And basically what it was, was a, how can I put this, a Left 4 Dead with vampires. So, generally speaking, it was a co-op game that you could play on Wii, which wasn't seen before at this point in time. It was before Black Ops released with actual co-op zombies. But this wasn't just a wave after wave survival game. It was a Left 4 Dead like game where you progress through a level fighting hordes of these uh, AI. And instead of zombies, it was vampires. Small, deadly looking things. And you'd occasionally run into a wolf, a werewolf, which would take a lot of effort to kill, if I recall. Now this is just remembering what I can from uh, the E3 release releases that never uh, of course became a game where you'd have to actually the only way to kill or hurt a werewolf would be to lure him into red barrels and or shoot or throw molotovs at it until it eventually died and of course there were the occasional stragglers which threw axes at you or hatchets and you had to kill them too so it was really really cool and frankly back then before I owned a PS3 or any other console and <coughs> was only uh, experiencing Wii graphics, I thought this game looks intense, it looks amazing, and I still think it looks intense, however, graphics wise, I just don't think so. Either way, this game looked absolutely awesome. It was unfortunate that it was never released, at one point they pushed the date back, I think it's believed to have been because of the Conduit 2 release. However, that was never confirmed, and the grinder went from not being a Wii exclusive anymore to being a kind of Wii exclusive, where Wii was the only way to actually enjoy it in first person, and on other consoles it was going to be a top-down shooter. So, you know, the game went through some changes from what I understand, but it was never released, and High Voltage Software has not released any details about this, so... High Voltage Software has been noted to be working on a Wii U title. Not most people believe it's Conduit 3. However, I'm kind of hoping for the grinder because we need, if Wii U needs a third party exclusive that's not a sequel right now. It needs an original and the grinder definitely be that original. And it, it's a great game and I would love to play co-op on Wii U. Fighting hordes of uh, vampires, zombies anything really. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and feel free to like it if you did. Uh, thank you for watching.